Hello, my name is Michael Crandell. I'm CEO of RightScale, and I'd like to welcome you to our first in a series of Chalk Talks on cloud computing. In these Chalk Talks, we're going to be covering, really focusing in on the value of having a cloud management platform in enabling you to leverage the promise of cloud computing, the true promise of IT resources on demand for uh, what you need when you need it. So to speak for a moment about what we call the wheel of value at right scale, we can see that there are really a number of points that a cloud management platform provides in terms of helping you take advantage of cloud resources. They range all the way from configuration and management through to control, visibility, codification of best practices uh, for corporate governance, as well as portability and choice in architecting solutions. Today, we're going to focus on this area of dynamic configuration of server resources and managing at a systems level rather than at a server level in cloud computing. So let's switch over here for a moment now and take a look at some customer use cases that we have uh, that I'd like to highlight to help show how actual real customers are using cloud computing today. I think by now pretty much we all know the basic story of the advantage of using cloud infrastructure. And it has to do with, with this diagram here, which really shows uh, the red line is showing us fluctuating demand, in this case increasing demand, uh, for utilization of resources based on traffic or internal usage. And in any situation like that, what we try to do um, as infrastructure providers is take a guess as to what's going to be required in terms of load and traffic. That's represented by this dashed blue line. And we've taken that guess, and then we attempt to build out the infrastructure or lease or provide the infrastructure needed to cover that. And that's the orange line here. So you can see that demand is increasing on a, a variable flexible basis. The infrastructure build out is marching up in this orange uh, blocked line. Every time you buy or rent new infrastructure, it's there. And what happens is two things. First is this kind of problem where at this point in time, you've got an opportunity cost. You've built out more infrastructure than you need, so you're paying for something you're not using. But worse than that happens over here and over here where the actual traffic and the requirement from users has exceeded the infrastructure that you have. That's where you lose customers, either external customers visiting a public website, for example, or you lose the trust and faith of your internal customers within your company who are coming to you to provide resources because now all of a sudden the applications that either camp is using are slow, unresponsive, worse yet, the whole site goes down and crashes. So what happens with cloud managed infrastructure is that we can see that what's provided will start to follow a pattern like this where the infrastructure loaded actually very closely matches the demand curve. You know, an example of a customer who's seen this kind of growing traffic is our customer Playfish. They're an online game provider. I think they have two of the top five games on, uh, on Facebook. And so they've seen uh, really skyrocketing demand and used right scale and cloud infrastructure resources to meet it. Let's turn to another example because the only benefit of cloud is not just around scalability. It's also around other use cases. This one is around test and development. What, what I mean by that is in oftentimes uh, a company will need to develop for a portion of time, go through a testing and staging process on a new application, and then launching it. And this example actually is a graph from a real world case with our customer called StarCut. StarCut is a company that is a publishing uh, provider for publishers of content who want to get onto mobile devices, phones, PDAs, etc. And StarCut helps them do that. Well, what happens is sometimes the content that's provided becomes very popular. And so there are flash crowds that hit. So in anticipation of one such event, StarCut was publishing information. And over here, they were actually able to run a sandbox test 
anticipating the kind of load they would get later on in the actual event. And what they did was anticipate fairly well, so the actual peak of the event was lower, and the application performed flawlessly, largely because they were able to anticipate. So in this environment of test and dev also, uh, the cloud and a managed cloud is very useful. The final example I wanted to cover has to do with grid or batch processing applications. And this is exemplified by our customer TC3 Health. TC3 Health is a company that analyzes health insurance claim form submissions to find which ones are fraudulent, uh, which ones might be improper and should not be processed and paid. And so they get batches of health forms in a somewhat predictable pattern. They don't know exactly when they're coming from day to day, but they'll get a batch of sometimes many millions of health forms. And so with managed cloud, they're able to spin up enough processing power to take care of the processing needs when they come in, when these batches come in, uh, and then move back down when they're not being used. So it's a perfect example of a, of a more predictable, routine kind of uh, an adaptation of IT resources to need. Those are just three use cases, but they exemplify the variety of how the cloud is being used and how a cloud management platform can provide what's needed to help deliver that. I'd like to dig in very quickly to what's behind the scenes that's really enabling these IT resources to be leveraged that way. What, what enables servers to come up and meet that kind of demand? Well, you know, servers don't launch themselves and they don't automatically work this way. It takes a management platform and a layer above the servers to help make that happen. That's what we do here at RightScale. And I'd like to call particular attention to uh, a concept that we've evolved and invented and pioneered called server templates. And server templates are really the basic building block in the RightScale system of how servers function in an automated fashion. In simple terms, a server template is composed of a base machine image. So we still do use machine images, but we boil them down to just the plain vanilla components of the operating system, be it a Linux distribution like Ubuntu or Windows. And then on top of that, the other aspects of the server's behavior are defined at launch time, at runtime. So we call this dynamic configuration. And all the components from that base image up load from the right scale main system to help that server perform whatever its function is. It might be a web server, it might be an application server, it might be a batch slave processing server or a database. Uh, all of that gets defined at runtime through scripts that uh, are loaded and can contain variables that get downloaded from the right scale system. As a result of this dynamic configuration, when you come to management of the entire system, you end up with the ability to have glue that takes a number of servers and lets them intercommunicate with each other and therefore manage a whole cluster of servers, what we call a deployment, as a cohesive unit uh, and therefore as a system. And that's why we talk about managing not at a server level, but managing at a, a systems level. So that's where the real power in automation comes with regard to dynamic configuration and systems management. So for today, I uh, thank you for listening. We've covered just a piece of the right scale wheel of value. We'll be returning later again to talk about these other portions um, in future talks. And I'd invite you in the meantime, we do have a free version of right scale as well as our paid editions. It's very easy to sign up. So if you'd like to do that, please visit our website, um, www.rightscale.com, where you'll find information in the products section about server templates and deployments, including wiki entries and another video that dives deep into what server templates are, as well as the ability to sign up for our free version. So with that, thanks very much for joining us today. Mm -hmm.